Hi guys, Jesse here, and welcome back to my Star Wars Rebels reaction series. Today we're going to be moving on to Season 2, Episode 13. So on the last episode we had the Ghost Crew stealing ships for the Rebellion, Ryder Azadi making the decision to join the Rebellion for real, and Princess Leia being the dopest bitch around, even at 15. It was a fun little episode. I wouldn't exactly call it filler, but it was incredibly self-contained. I think the biggest thing that is going to impact the series going forward is Ryder Azadi. How much his presence is going to be felt in the series going forward is yet to be seen. Though I'm excited to delve into his character a little more as the season progresses. I doubt we'll see Leia anytime soon, if ever again in this series. And I'm kind of fine with that. I would hate for her to become a recurring character. I think cameos like that, especially of characters who are very prominent, like Leia is, in the original trilogy should be left as episode cameos. And of all the main characters from the original trilogy to show up in the series, I think Leia technically makes the most sense. She obviously would be working with the Rebellion since a young age. Her father is incredibly connected to the Rebel Alliance, so her showing up in the series for an episode makes sense. If we continue to see characters from the original trilogy pop up randomly, I might be a little more upset about it. Like if Han ever showed up in the series, it would make absolutely no sense and would feel like a cameo for a cameo's sake. But last episode felt reasonably earned. But yeah, if there's ever an episode where the ghost crew gets stuck on Tatooine and Ezra somehow goes on an adventure with farm boy Luke, that's, that's what I'm done with. <laughs> but the episode itself was pretty self-contained, so there's not a lot to talk about. So let's go ahead and jump into this episode. We need a new hyperspace in and out of the local sector. I may have a perfect shortcut. The system of Concord Dawn. It's a Mandalorian colony, mm. not an Imperial territory yet. Concord Dawn is known for its elite warriors. They were brought in to train clones back in the war. And even the Empire thinks twice about a fight with them. The question yeah. is, who are they loyal to? The Empire does occupy their home world of Mandalore, so Imperial influence could be a factor. Years the Mandalorians are pretty much loyal to each other. Mandalorians will fight with just about anyone, including other Mandalorians. Diplomacy. Warriors like these only understand strength. He's got a point. But we shouldn't make an enemy if we don't need to. If we get permission to fly through their space, the next step could be recruitment. To grow the rebellion, we need friends like these Mandalorians. We could have our root and a powerful ally as well. Holy shit. So, that's Concord Dawn. Sure looks like it's been through a war. <laughs> this system has endured more than a hundred wars. My people don't need a reason to pick a fight. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Attention unregistered ships. This is Fen Rao, the protector of Concord Dawn. You are trespassing. Identify yourselves. We come in peace, protector. Peace? That's not a word I hear often. State your mission. We request safe passage through your system. Well, that depends. Who is asking? Those who would stand with Concord Dawn against the Empire. So you're the rebels I've heard about. How unfortunate for you. You haven't heard what we have to say. I don't need to. Out here, I act in the name of the Empire. Mm. You act like a little bitch is what you act like. God, what happened to that planet, though? Everyone on the ghost crew is a self-sacrificing idiot. Okay. That's it, protector. Follow me. What you doing, girl? What are you up to? Mm-hmm. Tara, where's that opening? Prepare to jump. 
Right behind you. They're never right behind you. Is this going to be a rescue mission? She's gonna be fine. Her, Kanan. It's bad. How is she? Her vital signs have stabilized. She is going to make it, but she requires rest. This is my fault. I shouldn't have left her. There's nothing you could have done. I'm just glad you're both back in one piece. Commander Sato wants the details on what happened. Yeah, I'll be right there. Okay. They're going to answer for this. Ben Rao was a fire pilot instructor for the Grand Army of the Republic. He also served at the Battle of Maikido. I know. I was there. So, I guess negotiating's been taken off the table? Yeah? You want to negotiate? Let's negotiate mm -hmm. by destroying their ability to attack us. I tracked them from Concord Dawn's Third Moon. They must have a base there. We can take out their fighters, all of them. Hmm. It's risky. But I approve. Well, I don't. This is a solo mission, and I'm taking it. I'm already one man down. I won't risk anyone else. My way. We're a team. You can't go without us. All right. I'll take Chopper. <laughs> <laughs> but that's all, and this is not open for further discussion. I can hear you, and yes, I know what I'm doing. Just program the nav computer. <laughs> Chopper, he's like a petulant child. Like, do we have to? Do we have to go on this mission? Like, uh, can you just really? Could you just take Sabine, please? <laughs> you got a stowaway. mission. We need to recruit the Mandalorians to join the rebellion. The protectors almost killed Hera. What are you thinking? I'm thinking we can still offer them a chance to change. Everyone deserves a chance. Ugh, you know, this Jedi philosophy stuff doesn't work for everyone. That's mm. why we're at war. <laughs> wow, this is really pretty looking. Have we been to this planet before in the Clone Wars? It seems vaguely familiar. I think I brought enough explosives. You always bring enough explosives. Hopefully you forgot to use them. I get down. They got company. Oh god, who is this? Look, having Mandalorians on your side is... It would be a really good help. <laughs> the Mandalorians are finicky at best. Pretty bold to sneak onto my base. I'm gonna assume you're one of those rebels I dealt with earlier. That's a pretty good guess, but not the entire truth. We never met, but I do know you. In fact, I came to thank you. In the Clone Wars, you fought in the Third Battle of Maikido. And I was there. My master, Depa Balaba, and I were pinned down, trapped by droids. You and your Skull Squadron flew into the Separatist fire over and over to cover us. Mm. But you saved our lives. Mm. That was a long time ago. I was younger and more reckless. You gave me a chance to live that day. Now I'd like to return the favor. <laughs> Cold, Kanan, cold. 
Oh, girl, you're already. This seems a little preemptive. Must be the wind. How's it going, boys? Where did you steal that armor from, bounty hunter? I forged this armor with my family. Family? That's a bold claim. What's your house? I'm Clan Ren, House Vizsla. House Bisla? She's Death Watch. Traitor! My mother was, but I'm not. I came here to settle Fizzla. the war, and I invoke the code uh -huh. justice through single combat. Well, who's in charge here? The Empire or Mandalore? You must know the Empire isn't interested in sharing their power. In the end, everyone is their enemy. If we don't stand together, then we're all alone. Mm. Mandalorian trespassers invoke the code. She claims she's House Vizsla. I thought we had an agreement. They started it. Your house is an enemy to the protectors. Call out your opponent for combat to the death. I thought you'd never ask. I call out you, Fen Rao. You're gonna pay for what you did to Hera. Ah! Just like I said, you rebels fight back. Girl! Sabine, you know this isn't what Hera wanted. She didn't want to create enemies, and she wouldn't want you to die. I'm not planning on dying. I'm afraid the only way you're getting out of here alive is if she kills me, and that is not going to happen. What is it with you Mandalorians? <laughs> Never knowing how to solve anything except through the end of a blaster. Sabine, you do this. You're no better than him. Kanan, you need to stop talking now. Do you have a plan? Sabine, I love her, but she's a little trigger happy. <laughs> mm, that's a little close to the flames. Kanan, if you crash, you're on the plane too. Bye-bye. Mm. Jedi. Better get that. Are you crazy? You can't let a prisoner receive outside communications. Just answer it. Stand down. There's no need. But sir, if the Empire finds out about your capture, you're not gonna let that happen. And the rebels? Till I give the word, there is to be no mention of the rebels. Their ships are to be granted safe passage through our system. Hmm. As you wish. Why? Because they let you live? Right now we are only friends because we have to be. Oh. I guess it's in his best interest. Well, the Empire doesn't make a habit of rescuing people. The last thing Rao wants is Imperial ships all over his territory. And that's exactly what he'd get if they found out he was our prisoner. Kanan, Sabine! Hera wants to see you. 
I hear we're taking prisoners now. Mm -hmm. I like to think of him more as a reluctant recruit. It was better than the alternative. We're not at war with the protectors. There was no need to take their lives if we didn't have to. Hmm. Sabine, you're sounding more like a Jedi than a Mandalorian. Well, I guess I've just been raised right. So that was season two, episode 13 of Star Wars Rebels. The Protector of Concord Dawn. I mean, it's always a good episode when you have Mandalorians. I'm a big fan of Mandalore and its culture and its many, many different eras it's gone through. It's also nice to get more from Sabine in this episode and learn a little bit about her past. And apparently the fact that her family's former members of Death Watch. So I'm not entirely sure how Mandalorian families work. I'm guessing that she's not directly related because in this episode Sabine reveals that she's from the family Vizsla. But I don't know if that's just like a clan name or if she is in any way shape or form related to the one Vizsla we know which is pre Vizsla or if the family Vizsla is the head of the clan. So pre Vizsla was the head of clan Vizsla which included Death Watch, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're all related. But I'm more interested in the fact that apparently Sabine's mom was with Death Watch, but apparently not anymore. So my guess is because of Clone Wars, there was that divide in Death Watch after Maul took over Death Watch. Bo-Katan and several other Mandalorians left Death Watch because they didn't want to follow Maul. So was Sabine's mom a part of that group that left with Bo-Katan? Or maybe she left Death Watch later, whenever the fall of the Republic happened, and after Maul's defeat, so left Death Watch then. But if she was with the group that left when Maul first got into power, would she be a part of Bo-Katan's Night Owls? Because that was the group that Bo-Katan kind of created as her own after she left Death Watch, and I'm pretty sure that's pretty much an all-female group. So maybe Sabine's mom was a part of the Night Owls and with Bo-Katan. And I think this might be set up for meeting... I also think this might be set up for meeting Sabine's mom later on. Because Sabine seems to hold her in high regards at the very least. Because she is the one that's mentioned whenever she's talking about her past and where her family comes from. I wouldn't be surprised if whenever we deal with... Sabine's family in a more concrete way. Sabine's mom didn't play a big part in that story arc. But yeah, it's interesting to see the different factions of Mandalorians that are kind of surviving after the Empire takeover. Because obviously we know that Mandalore proper is a Empire-controlled planet. But we also know that Mandalore in itself is always split up into 17 different factions and belief systems. So... The fact that there is a small group that doesn't want to be a part of Mandalore proper, but is still working with the Empire out of necessity, which is funny to me, because they obviously didn't leave Mandalore because they were upset with Mandalore joining with the Empire because they're still working with the Empire, but Mandalorians love to splinter off into as many factions as physically possible. Mandalorians will legitimately start a fight with just about anyone, including other Mandalorians. God, I wonder how many Mandalorian Civil Wars there's actually been. Too many, probably. But the Rebellion also earned a very, very reluctant ally with Finn Rao. Right now, he's working with the Rebellion out of necessity. I wonder how long that's going to last, though, before he inevitably betrays everyone whenever the rebellion is no longer in his self-interest. That is definitely the problem with working with someone who isn't loyal to the cause but is just doing it out of necessity is that whenever working with you is no longer the necessity, he'll just kind of gently shank you in the back and leave. So I'm looking forward to that inevitable shoe drop, whether it be in an upcoming episode or in an upcoming season, it is definitely going to happen. That is if we see him again and this isn't just a weird one-off episode, but I kind of doubt it. I don't think you would spend this much time building his character and his past to the Jedi Order and 
the clones just to capture him and then never see him again and just have him in a prison somewhere for the rest of the series. So yeah, he's probably coming back in another episode. And unless, by some miracle, he has a magical change of heart and joins the rebellion for the greater good, he is definitely going to betray everyone. And Sabine is going to take the brunt of that fallout. So that was my reaction to Season 2, Episode 13 of Star Wars Rebels, The Protector of Concord Dawn. So if you like this reaction, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps out the channel and keeps me motivated to keep making more of these. So thank you so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you next time. Bye.